Hey guys, happy Tuesday. Thanks for coming in tonight. Hi, replay viewers, and hi, YouTube viewers as well. YouTube viewers, if you would like to watch live and participate in the chat, you can come join me on Periscope. Just download the app and search for Penguin and Fish. I'm here every night at 9.30 p.m. Central. So guys, we are going to continue with the applique pieces for Block 49. All right, I'm going to flip you around and we will get you going. Hey there. Happy Tuesday, everyone. So we are going to get all these little applique pieces together. I have my, my fabrics all set for the rest of the pieces. I think we're just going to, we'll iron the pieces, uh, the paper pieces to our fabrics, cut them out, uh, take the paper off, and then lay them all out and press them onto our background block. And I think that's where we'll call it a day. And then tomorrow we'll uh, I'll sew the applique pieces uh, that are all be stuck onto the back of the fabric. We'll uh, sew them onto onto the block so it's permanent. And that I'll be doing on location at my parents' house. So we're headed tomorrow to visit them and uh, pretty excited about that. And uh, tomorrow, no tomorrow, on Thursday is going to be block 50, <laughs> which marks the halfway point of the Splendid Sampler Quilt Along. And we're going to be doing a special periscope for that. I'm going to lay out both my, all of my blocks and all of my mom's blocks. And we're going to see what our quilts might look like and look at all of our blocks together. So I'm pretty excited about that. That'll be on Thursday at my parents' house still. So, all right guys, I am going to flip you around. If you're new here, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. I'm the author of Sew and Stitch Embroidery and a Fabric Designer, and I'm here every night at 9.30 p.m. Central. And like I said, tomorrow and for the next few days, I will be on location at my parents' house. So we'll get to hear the frogs in the background again. It'll be fun. So, all right guys, let's get going. I'm gonna tilt you the other way. Okay, so I don't even have the sewing machine set up tonight because all we're going to be doing is ironing these guys and uh, getting them on this background black. Yes, the froggies! I'm excited for the frogs again. So we cut these uh, two days ago on Sunday. We got all our pieces prepped. So this is Pellon's Wonder Under. It's a fusible paper-backed adhesive. So this is the paper side, this is the fusible side. We're going to press this onto our fabric and then the paper will come off and then we can press it and turn, you know, that'll expose the other side of the fusible and then we'll uh, press it onto our actual block here. So, all right, we have all these little petals and they're going to be kind of tucked in at each of these little indents. So that's going to be this fabric here, the dark fabric. Hello! Thanks for coming in, everybody, tonight again. Uh, and then the flower part I'm going to do in this fabric here. And then this little circle I'm going to do here. So why don't we just start there. So I'm going to, we want to press these onto the wrong side of the fabric. And there's like a perfect spot right here for me to do that. That'll fit this. Uh, ooh, I wonder if it'll fit on this tiny little piece here. That'd be kind of a deal. Ooh, I think uh, we're just big enough. I'm going to use this tiny little piece that's hanging off right here. And, you know, so I'm going to just snip this. I think it's just big enough. Our seam allowance. Let's get rid of this guy too. There. Our seam allowance of, of this... I think it's going to go over it just a hair, but that's okay as long as the lined part is in this space. So it is, it is just there, which is awesome. So I'm going to give that a press. So you want to hold it there for uh, a good 10 seconds. Uh, otherwise, it, it, it says on the on your um, your fusible on the instructions, it'll say how long to leave it on there. I like leaving it on at least 10 seconds and I kind of err on the side of leaving it on more just because I want to make sure that that adhesive goes onto the fabric. Cause if it, if you don't put the iron on long enough and you take the, the paper off, it uh, sometimes comes off. 
You put aluminum foil underneath, it heats the other side and helps it here. Oh, I like that idea. I wonder, here, hold on, maybe I have a little piece of aluminum foil behind me. Ha ha, voila! <laughs> this is the benefit of uh, shooting this in the kitchen. Oh, there, that ripped off, that'll work. <laughs> That's kind of funny. We're gonna give that a go, I've never done that before. Uh, that is just right behind me. I'm in the, the, at the kitchen table here is where I do all my scopes. All right, I just turned my iron on too, so it might be warming up a little, but I'm thinking, ooh, yeah, that's hot. I'm thinking, I'm thinking we're pretty good there. We can always press it some more. So I'm gonna just set this to the side as I do the other ones. Let's get, let's do that, uh, this one's always tough, which is the wrong or right side. I think this is the wrong side. Let's do this flower. You know what? I'm going to actually give it a little press first. Sometimes pressing it beforehand a little bit, it heats it up. So when you, when you set your piece on there, it kind of sticks already. Oh, uh, it was just a suggestion uh, just now that it helps heat up the applique piece from the underside too. And I thought it was a clever idea, and I just happened to, I'm shooting this in the kitchen, so I just happened to have tinfoil <laughs> with an arm's reach right behind me, so I thought I'd give it a try. I've never done it before, I mean, you don't really need it, but, uh, you know, it doesn't hurt to heat up, heat up the, uh, the interface, or the fusible. So again, I'm just holding it here, and uh, yeah, and then the tinfoil will be getting it from the other side too, so that's kind of cool. So all we have left are these little itty bitty guys. Oh, the hubby's dinner in our class. Yeah, so I wasn't here last night uh, because uh, every Monday lately, I haven't been here because I have an oil painting class. It's a beginning painting class and it's with oils and it has been the funnest thing ever. But on top of that yesterday, it was also my husband's birthday. So we did that, uh, we, we went, uh, rock climbing at this rock climbing place in town. Uh, what's it called? Um, Vertical Endeavors. I don't know if you, if you guys might have one of those, but you, I don't know if it's a chain or not, but uh, it's just basically a huge giant warehouse -y, like, you know, ceilings that are like three stories high sort of thing uh, that is the climbing walls. And, you know, you can hook yourself up so that it's motorized. So, like, if you fall, you're just going to be coming down on the little motor or whatever. Uh, that's what we did. We've never done it before and it was so fun. Uh, and uh, our arms like right, like my my forearms are so tired. We've never done anything like that, like rock climbing uh, type stuff. So it was uh, it was totally fun, a fun little thing to do on his birthday. And, and we wanted, we want to go back and do it a bajillion more times. It was just a lot of fun, but I went, from that immediately to my my art class, my painting class, and that was totally dumb. After doing like the climbing, where you know, like I said, my arms are just like they, they hurt today, but I could barely lift my paintbrush. <laughs> it was ridiculous. It, it was like it was really tough <laughs> to paint after doing that. All right, I'm gonna just uh, now I'm gonna get these guys on just any which way they fit. On here, I have eight of them, so I'm gonna just get going with those. But then, yeah, total jello arms. It was sad. <laughs> it was just like, oh my god, I can't even lift this paintbrush. I'm gonna die of exhaustion from this paintbrush. But yeah, so anyway, that one that was really fun. Uh, uh, we gotta finish up the painting we were working on, and there's only one more class, which is good because then I'll be here with you guys again on Mondays. But it was sad too because. I really like that painting class. I want to I wanna paint a bunch more. I got like a little painting kit so I can start painting at home here on a, like a small scale and then uh, uh, eventually I'll I want to do like some big paintings and stuff too. But the ones on the the small scale I can do I'd love to do them um, on Periscope here and stuff too. So I'm hoping to get into that a little bit. But anyway after our class we went out to eat at 
uh, for, for his birthday at Butcher and the Boar, which is this awesome restaurant in town here. And, uh, uh, and good drinks and good food. And uh, we had uh, their s'mores for dinner, which are like, you know, these gourmet s'mores, like gourmet marshmallows and gourmet graham crackers. And they make all those in house there. And uh, just coffee flavored ice cream. Oh my God, it was so delicious. So uh, uh, that's what we did after after my painting class. So it was kind of funny because it was such a weird wardrobe day for me because <laughs> I had to, um, I, I just like wore my normal clothes in the morning and then I had to wear clothes that I could wear at the rock climbing wall. And, uh, you know, so something uh, comfortable, but you know, I didn't want like people looking up my tank top or anything like that. <laughs> that but then right after that like minutes after that I had to go to my painting class so I wanted to wear stuff that I wouldn't get paint all over uh, and then after that I wanted to look nice for going out to dinner so I had to bring clothes with me to all these places and I don't know it was just weird <laughs> it was a weird weird clothing day yesterday but it was super fun it was it was a huge day and then uh, but the, the one thing is okay so you might know that I've been working on the the uh the whole 30, which is like a food thing where you basically just eat really, I guess you could say like really clean foods that, um, to help just make your stomach and intestines and all that and, and hormones and all that function as best as best, best as they can before like reintroducing foods. And I basically stopped doing that. I have to, st I'm going to have to start it up again from scratch after I visit my parents. But I basically stopped that for John's birthday. So we had a ton to drink. Well, not a ton to drink, but we had stuff to drink and there was no alcohol on this plan. And we had all this meat with sauces and, um, you know, we had hamburgers early in the day. So all this stuff. And it was so salty, but delicious, like insanely delicious. I'm going to just give this a little bit more of a press. And uh, both of us did not sleep well. We were both up at like four in the morning and it couldn't get back to bed and just said upset stomachs and all that, but it was totally worth it. It was fun. <laughs> so when we get back from my parents' house, it's time to get on the healthy train again. <laughs> my guess is that won't be happening at my parents' house because we'll be eating fun stuff there too. So, all right, we are all Iron on. So now the next step, um, I'm going to tilt you guys back down again. So we got all our pieces on the wrong side of the fabric. This is our cute little guy that we made on, on Sunday. And now we're going to cut them out on the pencil line. So on Sunday, when we, when we made these paper pieces, we traced the design with the pencil and then we cut it off with uh, a little seam allowance. And the reason for that comes in now. Cause now we're gonna cut on the pencil line and we're gonna have a perfect perfect edge because that's uh, gonna be our cut line. If we would have cut a along the line, uh, the paper line, if we would have you know drawn the pencil line and cut instead of leaving the seam allowance, it would have been really difficult to cut it now and get that perfect edge. So that's why we, we left that seam allowance to get the, the perfect edge when we cut the actual fabric out. So. Now is the time that that's going to come into play. I know, real life met, met uh, <laughs> eating well life. All right, so this is also where you want to really pay attention to getting a nice cut edge, like nice arcs, nice everything, because this edge that we're cutting now is going to be the final edge that we see. Because we're doing raw edge applique, which means that this edge is gonna be exposed. It's not gonna be tucked under or anything. So we can't fix the shape later. I mean, we kinda can if we're gonna embroider around the edge, but I'm gonna just embroider, I'm not gonna embroider, I'm gonna sew a straight line just on the inside of the edge. So my, so my edges will be exposed the way that I'm gonna be doing this. So I, I want to make sure that the edges are as nice as I can get them. All right. 
So there we go. That's going to be our little centerpiece. Wow, I really put that on a dark area. It is almost black and it just has little hints of that orange. That's kind of fun though. So that's going to go right in the center. We have to first take the paper off, but I'm going to keep cutting these guys out first. Let's do the flower. So I'm just going to cut around here. You know, I probably should have done it up in this area to save on fabric, but oh well. I, you know, it, I don't have, this is all I have left of this fabric for the rest of this blended sampler, but this is actually uh, one of the fabrics from, from my collection, so I have a bolt of this on standby, so um, I'm not too worried about using this up because I can just get more of this, this blue. Alrighty, let's cut this out. I wonder, um, let's do the, let's do the inside first. This is kind of a nice, nice little um, piece of fabric here. I don't know if I want to completely wreck it. Ooh, this little inside, this is going to be a little difficult to cut this little inside circle. Let's see how we do. It's kind of funny having an applique piece. I want to get the scissors in there a little bit more. We're going to trim a little this way. So I have a little bit more space. There we go. That's better. It's funny having the applique piece with an inside cut out of it. I'm not sure I've done an applique piece like that before. Usually it's just like, you know, you have the outside edge of some fun shape, but this one's got an inside one. We're actually going to be able to see our pinwheel uh, between this dot and, and the flower, so that's kind of unique. Kind of a fun detail of this pattern. So I'm pretty excited for Thursday. I can't believe it's it's block 50 already on Thursday. It's We're at the like literal halfway point on Thursday. It's just kind of nuts. I don't know if you guys remember when that we were at like block 17 and I had like a little freak out. I'm like, oh my God, 17, how am I ever gonna make it to 100? And now we're already on 50 and it just seems like it's sped by. But yeah, I'm going to have a blog post that goes up tomorrow that talks about being on 50. There's a bonus blog tomorrow for the halfway. Oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah, I think I, I, think I read that. Oh, yeah, and uh, so they're going to be, there's going to be like a little blog, um, a blog tour, I guess. It's kind of what it would be called. This is kind of a nice little piece yet. But it has the, eh, you know what, I'm going to, uh, it's a pretty little scrap. I'm going to just leave it. Actually, I'm going to cut out. I don't want to save the scraps that have the paper on, but this is kind of a nice little piece. I can use it in, you know, when we make our own fabric in, again sometime. So I'm going to just save that scrap, but this is I'm going to throw away because I, I don't want to keep that paper. But there's going to be a, like a little blog tour that uh, some of the designers are going to be involved with, and, and I'm doing that too. So my blog post goes up tomorrow morning if you're interested in reading about how the experience has been for me so far. Uh, I, I actually talk a lot about Periscope on here because this has been like the best thing. I mean, I've learned more from hanging out with you guys than, uh, than like from any other project I've ever done. I, I feel like I've gone from like kind of a, a quilter that knows enough to get by. <laughs> To like someone that uh, knows enough that could, you know, be part of the crowd of any any quilter sort of thing. <laughs> from just from uh, uh, all the tips and tricks, you know, I learned here through Periscope with you guys. So that, that's been really fun for me. But yeah, so my blog post for that is going to go live tomorrow. And if you're on my newsletter, I have a little... Um, extra newsletter going out this week tomorrow that that links you to there too. So we're just hanging out here cutting these guys out. It's gonna this is gonna be what the night is. I mean it's just gonna be cutting out all these little shapes and uh, it, but we're gonna get this down onto our background fabric tonight though too. That's gonna be the most fun part. So when, once we get all these done and can see how it goes, how it's looking. Oh, thanks so much. Yeah, I'm purple today. I, I, uh, 
I originally got this color just because I thought it was cute, but the more I wear it, the more I feel like it's like 80s color. It's like 80s nail polish. <laughs> that kind of makes me like it even more. I think it's just like a fun, silly color. Oh man, we're not even halfway around this yet. All these little petals, and then we have those eight kind of sub petals that we gotta do yet, and, and then we'll be done here. All these cute little arches to go. It looks like those cookies that are vanilla. Oh yeah! It, oh, it so does. Oh, what are those? I know. I know exactly. I have a picture in my head exactly what you're talking about. The like vanilla cookies, and they have like that printing on top, that embossed printing or something too, right? Oh, maybe not. Or are the ones that have like, they're like white like this on top, and then it has like a chocolate layer underneath it or something. Like a like a thin layer of chocolate, and then then the cookie part on top is is yeah like a butter the white butter cookie. Mmm, yum. <laughs> Sounds so good. Is that what they're called? I have no idea. All right, we are just about done here. All right, garbage. Aw, see, that's so sweet. Oh, I, I, it didn't occur to me before that, um, I think we're gonna match up, this will be easy to center because we'll match up uh, our uh, sewing lines to where they meet on these petals in the middle there. So that'll be, that'll be easy to place. That's awesome, that, that'll be good. I was. Kind of wondering how I would center it, like if I'm just gonna eyeball it, but uh, there we are so far. You know what, I think I'm going to take the the backing off as I go here. Oh, you put your finger on it and it's yummy. All right, so to take the paper off, in the center of the piece, I just kind of put a little X, just deep enough so that it feels like it's going through the paper. I mean, I mean I'm, not, I'm not like, you know, scratching it in there. I don't want to wreck the fabric. I just want to make sure that I'm getting through that uh, paper. There, and then I want to pull outward. I don't want to pick around at the edges because then uh, uh, they'll start to fray a little bit. I don't want to agitate the edges. Hmm, I might need to press it a little longer on here. Eh, I think it'll be fine. Yeah, it's fine. There we go. Like, see there, I cut that little edge. I'll have to trim that off. Yeah, I think I could have pressed this a little longer. So for all the other ones, before I take the paper off, I'm gonna just give it a little more of a press. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I, you can kind of see that I'm not getting it complete. Oh, let me get, try and get that in focus. Uh, focus. All right, I don't know if you can see, but not all of it is sticking 100% onto my fabric. You can kind of see like little holes in it. It'll it'll go on fine still, but I don't, you know, I want to avoid that if I can. I want it, none of it to stick to the paper. I want it all to stick to the fabric. But there's enough on there that this will work and I was still able to get it off. So I'm going to trim these tiny little frays that happened. There, okay. So that guy's ready. I'm gonna get them all ready though before before putting it on. I think Periscope is having focus issues. You know, it's been having, they did an update uh, like a week or so ago and ever since then, it has been not great for me. Like the focus has been weird and uh, the projection on, on my side as, as a, a broadcaster is weird. Oh wait, you know what? I just said that I was gonna press that some more. So let's let's do that before I, I get too far. Just to, I wanna make sure. So I'm gonna make sure to not put the iron on that spot because I don't wanna accidentally have it stick to my iron. That would not be fun. 
let's, let's do it on a little tin foil again. That was kind of fun. But yeah, ever since that Periscope update, I haven't been, you know, super fond of that. There was that big Instagram update today, or was it yesterday? I think it was today. So now it's got like basically something similar to Snapchat as part of Instagram. So that was kind of interesting. I haven't done anything with that yet. I gotta get get on my Instagram game again. Is that why it's flip all the time now? Yeah, that's that's why too. So uh, from your guys' perspective, the the pictures probably keeps turning. That didn't happen as much before, and now it's like an all the time thing with with Periscope too. So I don't know. I'm hoping they get a new update soon and figure that out. I'm not having it, these all, all these new things. And you know what? Nowadays, there's lots of other places to live stream, so if you're gonna do it, you should get her right. All right, see now, all this is coming off pretty well. I know, watch fix things that aren't broken, exactly. It's annoying. Ooh, yeah, okay, so see here, it's wanting to pull up on the paper. I'm just gonna keep going, I think, though. So this could have used a little bit more time. But again, there's still enough on there and it's coming off easy enough that it's not going to be a huge problem for me, I don't think. All right, that will go like there. We got a little thread on here. Okay. So now, now we're just going to hang out and cut out all those other little petals that get tucked into the edges here. So I'm just going to get this as well placed as I can. Looks pretty good. All right, so this kind of blends into the background, but once we get these dark petals on, I think uh, it's gonna pop off again, pop from the background. We will see. All right, so I'm gonna just kind of trim around some of these just to, so I'm not doing such a big piece all at once. There we go. Oh good, these are going to be way easier to cut out. These little arches are pretty easy. Zoop. So this won't take all that long. And we'll take the papers off as I go. Oh, I didn't press these again. I'll give them a, another good press now. I don't know, maybe we don't need it. I guess we haven't really needed it so far. We'll see with this first one. This will be our test. Uh, yeah, it's kind of cutting, kind of holding on to there that the paper. So yeah, I suppose I'll just give them all just another quick press. Boo! Whew, they're staticky, sticking to my fingers. But yeah, if you're doing this and you feel like the the fabric, not the fabric, the the sticky, the uh, fusible web. <laughs> there we go. If you can feel it, that it, it seems like it's coming off on the paper and not staying on your fabric, that means you just have to press it a bit longer. So now these all get tucked under the edges here, kind of like that. Oh, they're cute. So kind of like that. All right, I'm gonna just keep going around the edge here. You know what? I might actually assemble this on the ironing board right away before we get too far, because then we can just, you know, then, I, then if I lift it up like that, it's gonna stay in its spot there. But yeah, when it's on the ironing board, then I can just just press it right away when I'm when everything's cut out. There, that looks good. All right, so let's keep cutting. Oh wait, I was gonna press these a little bit more. Get those on there and we'll do these guys right away. We'll just hang in there. Or hang out here for a little. Wait a few more seconds. 
This is fun though. I like raw edge applique where you can kind of just you're basically collaging together your your picture, which is kind of fun. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I've, uh, this is one of three of my new nail polishes that I kind of rotate, <laughs> rotate through, but this is definitely one of my favorites. It's fun, now that I'm doing these periscopes every night, it's an excuse for me to buy nail polish, because I have to, uh, I don't want, like, crazy chip nails for you guys every night, so I, I make sure that I at least try and have them painted, so that means I'm using it up a whole lot faster, or they, you know, just get gummy faster, so that means I gotta go pick out a new color. So that's kind of fun. <laughs> so every few months, every few months it's, uh, nail polish time at Target. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, not sorry, so big. Alright. Ah, they're sticking to me. Static sticking to me. Oh man, that rock climbing was so much fun though. Neither of us had done, done, uh, that at all ever before and you know we're on some system where we're like locked into this rope a bunch of times and then it has like a mechanical thing that that uh you know you can't fall it it just it you sit if you if you let go of the wall it just kind of lowers you <laughs> slowly this this you know mechanical pulley system or whatever so it's fun after you get past that when you're like okay i can just let go and it's okay then it's awesome because you can just climb, but oh my gosh, it's hard. <laughs> That's got to be the best workout ever, though. I mean, we were, we were talking afterwards that, oh my gosh, we should just, instead of joining a gym or something, we should just go to the rock climbing wall once a week or something. That would be the best because it, it was just like working out our back and arms and everything. And, and I sometimes feel like I have kind of like weak forearms and wrists. And you know... For all this craft stuff, I just feel like I need to have like some nice strong wrists and, and I can definitely feel they're sore, like I work them out uh, right now. So I mean, I'm just thinking, for the sake of crafting, I should be rock climbing more often. <laughs> that's that's why, what I concluded after, after yesterday. <laughs> so we'll see, see if we head back there sometime. But yeah, it, it was totally fun. But man, there were some serious people doing serious, crazy rock climbing stuff there. You know, where they're not on the mechanical thing that lets you down. They have like another person and they have to screw in the things in the wall and clamp onto the next thing. Like all these things that we weren't doing. And you know, and everyone's just completely ripped with like, you know, perfect arms and back and all that from rock climbing. It's pretty crazy. But there was also, I'm, I swear, it had to be a three-year-old. This little blonde three-year-old who was like parents or someone was, you know, the rope person for him. But, uh, like blonde, like with that blonde white hair that happens sometimes before they get a little older. You know, my brother had hair like that. Like he just had white hair until he got, you know, to be like five or something. And then it turned brown or whatever. I don't know, something like that. But this... I swear, it was a three-year-old. Uh, I couldn't believe it. And he was just crawling up there and like it was nothing and pretty crazy. Yeah, he was pretty cute. Toe heads? What's toe heads? Is that what it's called when you're super blonde when you're little and then grow out of it blonde hair oh my gosh i never heard that before oh that's interesting <laughs> yeah that's totally my brother but yeah this kid was straight up white blonde <laughs> toe heads i've never heard that before i asked my mom if she knew that 
kind of funny. All right, come on, paper. So the other thing, though, is that, which might be my problem now, if you iron too long, it's hard to get the paper off. <laughs> so that might be what's happening now. It's a little difficult to get the paper off. So it's kind of this mix, this perfect mix you have to get for um, this wonder under the fusible web. Oh, this is looking so cute. I like it. All right. We got five more. Yes, it melts back on itself. <laughs> Yeah, that's, yeah, it's just like, it's connecting itself back to the paper, you're right. Yeah, that's how my brother's hair was, just like platinum. All right. I'm always so afraid with the pressing that I'm going to get it too, like I'm going to be on it too far and have that problem where I can't get the paper off. But whenever I lean too much the other way, then it just doesn't even do it. So if you're using the foil, oh, don't press this line. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, if you're using the foil, then you're getting the heat from the other direction, too. So this is taking a little time to cut all these out, but uh, as far as applique blocks, it's, actually, it's, not, it's not too bad. A little bit of time, but it's worth it. It's fun. Oh, we just, uh, it was a suggestion to when we're pressing these to press on tinfoil because then it heats it up from the other side and you don't have to hold it on, hold the iron on as, as long. I thought I'd give it a try. We should do like a time test. So my science brain is kicking in. We should do like a, you know, have a, the stopwatch and then time it on this side uh, and then then do it uh, with the tinfoil and, and time it again and or do it like in one second or like like two second increments like one two and then uh, see how well it's it stuck on both <laughs> you know do a whole time test thing that sounds like work I want to make sure that I'm getting them tucked all the way under, so I'm not like leaving a little bit of it exposed. Nah, I'll get back there. There, I think that's good for the sake of science, exactly. All right, four more, and then all we're gonna do is just plop the iron right on top of this. I mean, gently. I don't want things to move around, but you know, this is kind of fun placing it as I go. It's just fun to see it develop versus to keep on cutting and cutting and cutting and kind of breaks up the process a little bit. Do you keep it? Yeah, I have it on the cotton setting, cotton linen, linen setting. Uh, you should you should check whatever um, uh, fusible paper-backed adhesive you're using. They'll they'll say on the packaging what setting you should use, and, and then you should just follow that. I think this. Set the cotton setting setting for like ten seconds or so. Three more, and then we're good to go here, people. Oh yeah, these are, this has definitely been on a little long, I think, but we'll get it off. I'd kind of rather it just take me a little longer to get it off like this than have it all stick back onto the the paper and not stick on the um, fabric at all. That's not taking too long to get off. Oh, <laughs> no problem. Yeah, I mean, it, they're probably all pretty similar. I mean, I think with my, I haven't looked at my packaging for a while either. I'm just, uh, I just, in my brain, I have kind of a memory of it being uh, about 10 seconds on cotton. So, you know what? Why don't we check for sure? Now I'm curious. Um, let's see. Oh, it says five to eight. Uh, 
Prep, place rough side of wonder under against the wrong side of the fabric. Press for five to eight seconds with a hot, dry iron. And so hot, that's, the iron is always hot. <laughs> so funny. Oh, a tip. If you use a damp press cloth, a temperature timer, oh geez, well, whatever. So it's a five to eight seconds on hot. <laughs> So I don't know, I've been going about 10 seconds on the, the highest setting, the cotton setting, and, and that's been, that's what I typically do, and it works fine. I've used the uh, heat, wait, what is it? Heat and press? Heat, heat and press. I think that's another brand. No, heat and bond. Heat and bond light. I think that's, that's another one. Usually comes at 12. <laughs> um, I usually, uh, I've used that before, and, you know, I think it's pretty similar. Yeah, I mean... It is, you have to think about, you know, before you just jump in, think about your fabric. I mean, I'm using all, like, quilting weight fabric that's pretty tough, but, like, if I was using, you know, some, like, white, I don't know, silky something or another, something that could easily be damaged by a lot of heat, I would, um, I would, uh, probably pay closer attention. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, I would do the heat settings for... For whatever the fabric calls for, yeah. So I mean, this is cotton fabric, so I'm, I'm just staying on that high setting. Seems to work, and like I said, you know, play by play by um, ear too. I mean, if you're pressing on it and uh, when you tear the paper off, it's still sticking to the paper, then it means you're either not hot, hot enough or you haven't been on long enough. You scorch the white background with the craft iron. Yeah, see, that's, I'd be a little scared with, uh, yeah, the light colored fabrics too, holding it on for a long time. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's a little experiment game to get it just right with whatever your fabric is. This seems to be doing okay. Where it gets tricky is when you have like long skinny pieces and these are nice big chunky pieces so it works pretty well. All right, so it looks like this one's not tucked under all the way. All these other ones look tucked. Okay, two more and then we can press it down. Hey, this didn't take long at all. Yeah, so tomorrow I will be on location at my my mom and dad's house, and I will. Um, I'm hoping to stitch this down with. Um, I thought I got an outer here already. Uh, maybe not, but I was thinking of using like a 12 weight um, Orfil thread, which is that thicker thread that kind of almost looks like embroidery floss. It's it's about the thickness of two strands of embroidery fl floss. The uh, the 12 weight or fill and I had uh oh I know what I had I had it in like this really pretty green color like a like a spring green kind of just almost exactly like this and I was thinking of stitching just inside the edge with just a straight edge or a straight stitch uh in that green the green thread so that's, that's kind of my plan for for the applique or for stitching the applique down so I'll do that at my on my mom's, uh, at my parents' house, at my mom's machine. So that'll be interesting. It's always kind of weird going onto a different machine that you're not entirely used used to. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> oh, spray fixative, no iron. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, you know, I've never done that with with fabric before, but yeah, I mean, that make, that totally makes sense. You can just spray fix, cut out your shapes in fabric, forget this whole process, just cut out your shapes in fabric, uh, throw it on like a, a piece of like a, you know, a scrap piece of paper, like a, a garbage bag, like a paper garbage bag, and then do some spray adhesive, like some sort of non-toxic fabric friendly spray glue, and then, then lay them all, all down. I mean, I guess the nice thing about doing it this way is that I can place this however I want and rearrange it and rearrange it. And it's only when I put my the iron on uh, at the end that it's that it's going to um, be permanent, you know. So 
So I think this this way it allows me to move things around. Whereas if I glued, oops, I, I just moved the flower. If I glued, put glue on this, then I got it. I'd have to get it right, right away. Okay, last one. Oh, it's looking so sweet. This is uh so polka dotty. I was in um thinking, uh, it's kind of like this this uh these squares that are formed by dots, but cut up this small. It just looks like. It does look like a vintage polka dotty fabric. And I think uh, I think the background uh, fabric is really making it look um, vintage too. Just a fun little floral. All right, last little cut around here. Yeah, I'm excited. We'll get this. We'll get this glued down tonight. Yeah, so we'll get this. Uh, this is the perfect timed block because you know I, I had that day yesterday that I wasn't here. So I'm I'm happy that I'm able to. I'll be able to get this one done before the next block comes out. It's always nice when, when that happens when you can get a block done before the next one comes out. I don't know if you guys who are working on the Splendid Sampler have been. Uh, Having to deal with that too, just like a new block comes out and it's like, oh no, I'm not done with the old one yet. Ah. Then it's like, do you keep working on the old one or do you start the new one? I've been just starting the new ones and then uh, catching up on the other ones when I can. But it's super nice to finish it before before they come out. Alrighty, so there we go. Oh, your grandma's quilt. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so let's just do our final inspection. We think all these guys are in the right spot. I don't know. I think it looks okay. Let's just, I think let's just get it pressed. Just trying to center this guy a little bit more. Uh, I think this dot looks centered. Let's do it. Oh yeah, an entire quilt of this would be totally, totally pretty, wouldn't it? So, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to just put it on half here, just to kind of get it down. And, uh, you know, I want to be gentle and careful with it. And then I'm just going to do this other side quick. I'm just kind of tacking it down. I'm not doing like the final press. I just want to get it all on there. Okay, so it all looks fine. So now I'm going to, now I'm going to do my hold, my, my, my 10 second hold. <laughs> And um, I'll probably actually, before, before I sew this down tomorrow on my mom's machine, I'll give it another press just because it makes me less nervous. <laughs> just to give it another, another quick press before, um, before stitching it down. I, I figure it can't hurt. Your iron is steel nonstick. Yeah, it should be. I mean, it's a nice iron. I've had it for a while. Um, it should be non non stick, but I mean, like if I if I got some of this goo on it, I mean that that would not be good for the iron. It would it would stick to the iron, and I'd have to clean off the iron somehow. We're actually getting done a little early tonight, so that's that's good. That didn't take nearly as long as I thought it would to cut out all those shapes. Oh, but there we go. I'm so excited. Here, let me see. I thought I got that green thread out. Oh, here it is. So this is this is what I'm thinking. Here, let's unwrap it right away. This is what I'm thinking for the the applique. Let's just pop this out. So this is that 12 weight orofill, which again is like two strands of embroidery floss. Like look, I mean it's pretty thick. You can see how, how thick it is. Um, but I thought we'd use this. Yeah, I think it's the perfect springy color. So I, I would just go just in a straight stitch around the inside edges of of all these of all the little applique pieces. And I think, uh, yeah, I think the color is just going to be sweet and and just right. It'll almost, I think it'll almost look like hand embroidery just because this this is so thick. So I'm just going to do like a normal a normal straight stitch. Is this popping up? Yeah, okay, I'm gonna press that a hair more. But yeah, so that is the plan. Yeah, so this is, it's Aurafil 12 weight, and they don't do a very good job at, at naming naming colors or anything. Um, 
I'm guessing this color is, I don't know, one, two, three, one? I don't know. That's just a weird way to do it. But it's 12 2, so 12, 12 weight. Oh, yeah, the green and the blue are going to be really pretty, I think, too. Yeah. But yeah, so you can see the difference. So this is what we've been sewing with the weight. Uh, this isn't the same color, but this is, uh, I'll just get in focus here. This is the 50 weight. So this is the really thin thread that we've been sewing with for all our blocks. And this is the, I'm going to drop these. This is the 12 weight. So you can see just uh, the different in thickness. I'll actually probably have to switch the needle to something bigger like a quilting needle or a jean needle, something that can accept a bigger, a bigger, fatter thread like this without it rubbing. But yeah, so that's that's like the, the difference. This is, we did a test, an embroidery test a while back. Um, and this was, I think, kind of back my, by my block. My block was block 11. I think we did an embroidery kind of lesson then. Um, but I think we did a test and this was about the same size as two strands of embroidery floss, the, the 12 weight orophil. So all right, there is the plan. So thanks so much for hanging out with me, guys. I'm gonna flip you around and we will wrap it up for the night. Oh, and the bobbin, you know what? I didn't think of that. I wonder if I'll have to, you know, I might leave the normal thread in the bobbin. I think that's what we did last time and I think that might've worked better. However, I am gonna be on my mom's machine and she's got a fancy Bernina compared to, to mine, which is just, you know, bare bones. So hers might actually be able to handle it a little bit better. I'll have to, I'll consult with her. She's the expert on her machine. So I'll see what she says on, on how to use this thread. <laughs> how about that? And I will report back. Oh, so you think I should leave, leave the 50 weight? Oh yeah. So with the tomato and the pincushion, we did, I think, leave the 50 weight in the bobbin, but that we did a tight zigzag and I'm not sure if, you know, that's going to have, we're, I don't think we're going to have the same problems uh, with the zigzag as we're just going to have with the straight stitch. I'm not sure. We'll see. I will, like I said, I'll consult with mom, but here we are. So I always like showing it like this because you can get a sense of the, the size of the block. I mean, these are not big blocks and, you know, these little pieces are super teeny. But I am um, in the in love state, and I'm just super excited to get this green on there. Uh, my, this is my mom's favorite color, so she might steal this from me. We'll see. So, all right, guys, I will see you tomorrow in a new location. I will be, again, at my parents' house uh, where we'll hear the froggies. And uh, this, will, this video will go up on YouTube. Uh, it's at Penguin and Fish Movies. So you can check it out there. And I have the video one for this, this block is up there now at Penguin and Fish Movies. So thanks again for coming in, guys. And uh, join me tomorrow while we finish this block. And on Thursday for the Periscope, I'm going to show all my blocks laid out. There's going to be 50 of them all laid out and I'm going to, my mom's is going to be laid out too. So you'll get a sense of what our quilts are going to look like. And we can see just how different both of our quilts are going to be from each other, just from different color choices. So, all right, guys, I will see you tomorrow. Have a great rest of your evening. <laughs> Thanks again. Bye.